and welcome to graduation week uh, for many of these puppies at No Bones About It Puppy Day School. Um, so here today I have um, Louie and Kona and Luke and then we also have graduating or graduated uh, Jesse and um, Junebug. So big group of pups that have all finished in the same period of time. And uh, I have these guys all here together today because I just want to go over some parting thoughts for all of you. Um, the first of which is that the goal of this program is to lay a solid training foundation for puppies and entering into adolescent. It is by no means meant to be the end of your training journey. Um, really, the way I look at it, in a perfect world, we would have training continue on through, uh, in some degree, adolescence. <coughs> oh, hi! Who is that? Uh, so, what, well, that could be a year and a half, it could be two years. Whether that means that you intermittently do a class to kind of keep you up, you know, working. I, I equate it to this. Everybody says they're going to do training at home, but it's sort of like exercising. It's like you're a little bit more motivated if you have to show up every week and, um, and you are accountable. So if you feel like you're somebody who could kind of continue on and challenge yourself, great. If not, I would recommend trying to do, you know, a, a six week class here and there. It doesn't even have to be, you know, what I would call straight up like, you know, uh, obedience training. I don't love that word, but uh, it could be agility. It could be scent work. It could be um, something, uh, you know, some other athletic game. There's all kinds of classes that are out there that don't necessarily center on teaching the basics. These guys actually do know the basics. They know, you know, sit, they know down, they know go to your place. They have the beginnings of leave it. Um, they have the beginnings of their leash manners. And, oh, excuse me, that's my, that's the corner of my, my bench. Um, they, have the solid foundation for recall so um, that's just my my push to want to keep you kind of in the game with these guys the next thing that I want you to think about is continuing um, you know we're, we're all busy everybody's got a gazillion things going on but I've tried to really hit home with you over the past four or six weeks depending on how long you've been here uh, the importance of just sprinkling in your training all the time every day and that shouldn't require more effort or time what it should require is or what it does require is that you just get in the habit of doing several repetitions of things every time you have an interaction with your puppy if you could only pick two or three things that you were going to continue to focus on in my book, it would be name game, it would be your hand targeting. Um, go to your place is great because it really builds on a solid down, but that's more convenience. Um, name game will build on your recall, your come cue. So you're you know, calling your puppy when they're successful, you're always having lots and lots of, um, hi, good job. Always having lots and lots of praise for that. So those are the things I, we still need to work on that with you, don't we? So, with, yeah, with Kona, you know, building on, uh, you know, having a leash on. If you've got still got puppy that likes to jump, doing lots of rewarding at ground level. So puppy focuses way more on the ground than, uh, than upward. So those are the things I really want you to focus on moving forward. And then we'll do um, a little individual recap for each of these guys and so you can kind of see where they are with all their skills. All right? So we'll see you in a few minutes. There you go. There you go. So we're kind of out and about on a little um, final field trip for uh, graduation. And look. So I'm trying to get Luke into what I would call reward zone, which is 
sort of this nice little place next to me where boop, boop, where he realizes good things happen. Um, this is, you know, we morph this into a loose leash walk where we start walking and the dog gets rewarded for giving me eye contact. But it's also not something that I want you to think you need to be doing um, for any long periods of time. This is a very artificial state. It requires a lot of concentration on a dog's part to stay here when we're walking. Um, and sniffing is actually really good for a dog. It creates um, scenarios where they, they are utilizing all their senses. It's something that will help actually tire them out in the long run. So I do a lot of breaks with puppies where I just stop and kind of let them sniff. Um, I've heard other trainers that sort of refer to it as like the social media for dogs where they get to check out like all the other sniffs and smells and things that are going on and other dogs that have been nearby and animals. So, um, hi. So I'm gonna show you kind of what that would look like in um if i were out and about i'm gonna start back here come on all right let's go let's go so i'll do a lot of rewarding as the dog's next to me and we're walking Anytime they get eye contact, give me eye contact, I'll be rewarding. And then I'm going to stop and I'm going to say, okay, let's go. Let's go sniff around. I'll give them a little breaks to just like hang out. If I want to keep walking, I can walk a little bit, but just kind of let them do their thing. be a great opportunity you know how I keep harping on the fact that like every time you have interactions with your dog you can be practicing stuff this would be a time where I could be like you know go sniff 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 and then look, hop. yes good job and now we've got all kinds of kids coming so this is super cool Touch. because we can look at what what's Aren't my puppy's reaction going to be, and how can I keep them focused when they're not to the Look! Touch. So I'm not going to tell him no for barking. Touch. Bop, 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 bop. Touch. I might back him further away from the distraction. Touch. Doing hand targeting is better than asking your dog to sit. Now, if he wants to sit on his own, that's great, but it really only gives him all the time in the world. Touch. Touch. To concentrate on the stuff that's maybe making him a little bit reactive. Touch. So the boys jogging by made him reactive. Touch. So I want to give him some mental stimulation by asking him to do the hand targeting versus having him sit and then just telling him no for no barking, okay? So, we've got a huge group of kids coming, so I'm gonna back away because I know that based on the history that we just saw, there's a lot of things going on out here. Hi! That's even intimidating for me, <laughs> let alone a little puppy. Hi! <laughs> Over here! Look, go find it. I can even do a go find it. It's where I just toss treats on the ground. Go find it. Yeah. Hi. Go find it. So what I'm doing when I, when I find things that my dog is maybe a little bit uncomfortable around is that I want to reduce that stress level as much as I can. So happy tones of voice, relaxed, relaxed body language. Um, a go find it game is super fun. It gets the dog, again, to stop thinking about the thing that they are being reactive towards. Uh, so that's great, I think, feedback um, for you to work on when you're out and about and a dog is at this age is just starting to experience the outside world. So there's lots of things that they're going to be uncomfortable about. So pairing 
positive reinforcement, reducing stress level, playing fun games. Those are all things that you can be concentrating on when your puppy is, um, is out and about. All right, good job, Luke. You did a great job, yay. All right.